Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Fun Facts. So we are doing movies. I'm going to veer off into some fun places to go visit during the summer too. So we are going to kind of do a mix of that. Um, go check out my Funny for Friends channel. It has funny animals in it and everything. Um, and then what else do we got to go check out? Every, um, I have a games channel called Gamers Blitz. And then I'm starting a new channel of the Dark and Mysterious of people going missing. Um, but yeah, let's go check that out, plus the Patreon, plus the, uh, Spotify podcast. I know I have so much, but I'm just, you know, I don't know, a little bit of everything. Uh, I don't think I want to do all of it on one channel. I want to keep them all separate from each other so that you guys can go check it, check, like, you know, so you guys can go, if because if you have more of an interest in mysteries, I want you to subscribe to that, or if you have more interest in animals, I want you to go and subscribe to that. Let me know if you guys would like to see them in all in one channel. I don't know how to merge or do all that. But anyways, let's get right into the fun facts for you today. Can you guess what movie we're doing? Um, comment below which one you think or which movie you would like to see me do next. And you know what? Maybe I can do something here. Talk about fun facts and then you have to guess the movie at the end. That would be kind of cool. Maybe we'll start that today. Let's do that. That'd be fun. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> so the sources for today's movie are Yard Barker and Business Insider. So let's hop right in. 20 facts you might not know about this movie. Ryan Johnson had to take a break from the project. Johnson writer and director broke through with his twist on a noir in brick. That after that he came up with the general idea for night for for the movie and planned on working on it. He finished Looper. Then there was a bit of roadblock in that plan. That roadblock, a little film called The Last Jedi. After Johnson finished his weirdly de- device uh, divisive Star Wars movie. He finally got back to work uh, to work seriously on this movie. <clears throat> Johnson had a lot of inspirations for his own take on Wood Woodonet Wodunet or oh my gosh, Who Done It? Johnson cited many inspirations. He referenced films like Death of the Death on the Nile, Gosford Park, and Sleuth. In particular, uh, Johnson kept mentioning the lesser-known movie, The Last of Sheila, so if you enjoyed this movie, you might want to check that one. The title was taken from a song, number three. John- Johnson got the title for the movie from a Radiohead song of the same name. However, he made it clear that the song had nothing to do with the movie. Johnson said the phrase had always stuck inside in his head, and he left it would be great title for a murder mystery. He was right on that. Our character's name was taken from the book. Harlan Thromby, the famed writer played by Christopher Plummer, has a distinct name. It was not entirely a work of Johnson's fabrication. He took the name from a chose from a choose your own adventure book who killed the Harlow Thromby. Number five, a couple of frequent Johnson collaborators are involved. Trooper Wagner, the police officer in this film, is played by Noah Sagan. Sagan had a role in every single one of Johnson's movies. Additionally, Joseph Gordon Levitt uh, provides the voiceover on the phone of Detective Hard Rock. After starring in Brick, Gordon Levitt has cameoed in every one of Johnson's films. I did not know that, that of this movie. One cast member was a late addition. The security guard on the grounds of the Thromby estate was originally going to be played by Rick, Ricky Jay. Unfortunately, the actor and magician died during the production. He was then replaced in the movie by M. Emmett Walsh. Oh, that's sad. Number seven, this film was a family affair. Ha, uh, this movie has a core done by Nathan Johnson. Johnson also did the scores for Brick, The Brothers Bloom, and Looper. Those are all Ryan Johnson films. Ryan and Nathan are cousins, by the way. That said, Nathan has done scores for other films, including Gil- Guillermo del Toro's Nightmare Alley. Number eight, it was a Massachusetts production. 
Knives out were shot across Boston and surrounding areas. The exterior of the Thromby Mansion were, were a mansion in Natick, Massachusetts. Meanwhile, many interior shots were done at the Ames Mansion in Borderland State Park, also in Massachusetts. Number nine, a little bit of movie magic or maybe time travel was involved. Great Nana Thromby is quite old given that she is the mother of Harlan, whose 85th birthday is being celebrated in the movie. However, in real life, Kay Callan could not be Plummer's mother under any scientifically understood circumstances. Callan is six years old, younger than the man who played her son. Any guesses of the movie yet? Michael Shannon saved another actor's ad lib. When everybody in the family is yelling after Harlan's will is revealed to have left everything to Marta, Jaden Martell improvised a line where his character Jacob insults Marta and calls her an anchor baby. This is an ad lib in the first pass. It was lost in the noise. However, Michael Shannon heard Martell delivered it and went over to Johnson to tell him the line. Johnson liked it so much, so he had made sure to capture it in the next take. Danica McKellar is a fan. The film mentions a fictional Hallmark movie called Deadly by Surprise, which in the film's universe stars the erstwhile Winnie Cooper, Danica McKellar. Nobody had told McKellar she was name dropped in the movie, but fortunately she didn't mind. She said on Instagram she was a big fan of this movie and sent Johnson a knife engraved with Deadly by Surprise as a gift. One speech was almost cut. Perhaps the movie's most popular bit of dialogue is Dan- Daniel Craig's Benoit Blanc comparing the mystery to a donut. However, Johnson was not sure it would work and planned on cutting it. Craig convinced Johnson to let him give it a shot, and after seeing Craig do the speech, Johnson agreed he could keep it in. What do you guys think of this so far? Um... So this film is full of humor and plot twists, but much of the fun went on behind the scenes. This movie is a modern day whodunit mystery film with humor, stark attention to detail, and deep satisfying plot twists. The 2019 film, as we all, as you all heard, was directed by Ryan Johnson. Um, from changing lines to keeping family friendly to make sure all on-screen clocks displayed the right, correct times for the scene, the team behind the movie mulled over countless details while creating the Thrombies world. And we have some 16 facts. So Harlan's house was actually th- shot in three different locations. The exterior of the Harlan's home was a gothic revival mansion slightly outside of Boston, but the interior was shot in the Ames Mansion, a 1,200-acre estate that belonged to Blanche Ames, an inventor, artist, and women's rights activist. The producer had found this house along with some others, but we all liked the one-house production designer David Crank told Variety. When you walked in, it had character because no one had wiped it clean and modernized it. This house had been with the same family for a few generations. You walked in and its style itself to what we're looking for, Crank continued. The family was actually still in the house during the filming. They mostly would hang out in their kitchen with Jamie Lee Curtis doing crossword puzzles while we were filming. Johnson told Screen Rant, that would be kind of cool. I'd do that too. So obviously, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis was in this movie. The third location used to create the estate was Soundstage, which was used for Harlan's office. We had about three weeks to get to the office for uh, office ready for shooting, so we had to work very fast. He continued, the funny thing is that the way the office hallway and the upper floor we built on set was designed, it wouldn't have fit in the actual house you see in the film, but it was made for these scenes where people are sneaking around, trying not to get seen, and I'm really proud of how it ended up looking in the final cut. I love the ending of this movie, and if you guessed it right, the, the, um, oh wow, the movie is Knives Out. Let me know if you're a fan of the movie Knives Out. I love this. I like this movie. I fell asleep during the second one, so I got to rewatch the second one. But there was this really funny scene with Kate Hudson. Uh, and she's like, and they were talking about something like how, um, like, the clothes were made from people. Like, you know, like, they 
illegal labor basically and she's like okay sounds good i don't know i just that one stuck to me and i'm like oh my god <laughs> that's just funny her character was kind of dusty but it was it was a good one uh i i like knives out i haven't really watched onions or glass onion enough to know if i like it or not but that is it for me let me know which one you prefer if you've watched both i'll do another one for glass onion and we'll chat soon you have an awesome rest of your day bye now